Okay, I'm super excited to have you on the show. Thank How you so are you me. doing? What's going on? <laughs> what a world to be living in. I mean, wrestling is just great right now. Things are looking awesome. Um, I actually just this morning went back to rewatch your match that you had with Cody because I feel like that was really one of those matches that put you on the map. Let's go back to, to that moment of you getting into that match with Cody and having that moment on TV and sort of the reaction from the wrestling world to get to see you really in a match where you could like go. Yeah. Uh, oh my God. That whole week, my, my palms were so sweaty. Like I was like, oh my God, like can't believe this is happening because Cody actually came up to me and told me like literally the week before. And I was like, oh wait, are you serious? Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> um, because at that point I hadn't had that many TV uh, experiences or TV matches and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So I was like, oh my God, I can't believe this is happening. This is so cool. And then um, I went into the match thinking like, okay, like I'm just going to go into it and show people that I can just be just a wrestler. But I think Cody was just like, you know, we're going to get those trailers for you. And I was kind of like, okay. oh my God, that entrance was amazing. No, I'm just kidding. Oh <laughs> yeah. my god. No, it was so great. And like the use of having the Jacksonville Jaguars cheerleaders there with you was of course great. You're at Daly's place. Like, why not lean on those cheerleaders? Bring them in. Yeah. I mean, so I have a dance background, obviously. And um oh, I, grew up I know, and we're gonna get into it. <laughs> I, I cannot grew up dancing, wait. grew up, you know, in the cheerleading world and all that stuff. And uh, I choreographed the routine myself. I told, you know, I, the girls I wanted to, you know, kind of show them what I had you know my uh -huh. idea. and did uh, you feel like the need to kind of like flex on them to be like I know what I'm doing too thank you so much <laughs> <laughs> no I, I definitely just wanted to have a hand in what I was doing and what was what I thought was my moment um mm -hmm. and I think the girls understood that and they were so, like super cool about it like yeah let's do it it was so much fun um in the yellow gear Love the yellow gear. Thank you. It was inspired. It was done by Sandra Gray, Sandra Gray Originals. Shout out to Sandra. <laughs> Miss Sandra's the buzz. Uh, done by San Sandra. And uh, it was inspired by uh, the, the cartoon Totally Spies. Oh, you know what? I do really love when people put a lot of like thought into their gear like that of like a little homage to something or a throwback to something, whatever. So um, I, I've always been uh, very appreciative of that, especially when doing commentary, you need to like interject some little things like that. It's always super helpful to, to know. Yeah, um, what was your reaction to um, like after the match? I mean, people seem to really be applauding you, uh, seeing you in a, in a big moment like that. Yeah, I was very, very pleased with the reviews and all that stuff. Um, I was super, super, super nervous. Um, but I definitely felt like I still showed enough to the point where I let people know that I, I'm here and, you know, this yeah. is my coming out party. And um, yeah, I was very uh, pleased with the reviews and even just the viewership and all that stuff. And I was very, very happy about it. And I thought like, I, you know, I was very happy for myself. I was very, very yeah. like... Good job, Sunny. Yeah. Hell yeah. No, it was very, very cool. Yeah, it was nice to like jog my memory of that again. I'm like, oh my God, what a great moment that was. It was really, really cool. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, <laughs> all right, we're going to go way back. We're talking Jersey City. You grew up in Jersey City in the shadows of New York City. What was that like for you growing up in the city like that, having this performers, stars in your eyes kind of situation? Like, what were you like as a kid? When did you start to get that spark of like, I am a ham, I want to be front and center, like <laughs> having that performer's itch? When did that start to uh, to become super evident to you? That started really early. Um, I've always loved, I used to like <laughs> be in my living room and I would like put on music videos and make the choreography. Uh, what were like your go-to music videos? <laughs> a lot. What were like your like, especially like with like a dancer's background, like what did you grow up on that you're like, I think I can do this? I'm a nostalgia junkie. So everything from the 90s, 2000s era, I'm, I was born 93. I have 93 on my necklace right here. <laughs> um, I am totally obsessed with nostalgia. Um, so like it was like NSYNC and Britney and Janet Jackson was like a big inspiration to me and Maya and, you know, Usher, all these different awesome, you know, pop stars. Like I was super, super inspired by them. Destiny's Child, everybody. You know, what's funny is I was just thinking about Maya the other day. What has happened to Maya? 
Maya is actually independent. And I think what it happens when these artists like are super, super popular and then they go the independent route, the only way you're going to find them is if you check for them. So you have to search her name up. But she's yeah. actually, she has like, she's ha- she has a lot of albums. A lot of them are really, really, really good too. Yeah. Oh God, what was I watching that like she either she was in something or there was a song that maybe it was like it was like that. Remember like that Rugrats song that was. Oh, take there? me there! I wanna go there. <laughs> take me there. Yes. <laughs> what a jam that was! It was yeah, so. Good. That was really a good time for music, Maya. Yeah, I'm gonna look up Maya. I'm gonna go to Maya deep dive after this. Yes. Um, what is it? Um, K-I-S-S is a really good album, just to let you know. Oh, okay. Good to Keep know. Keep it sexy and sweet, yeah. Oh, is that what it's so called? Sexy and sweet? Keep it sexy and simple, I think. Oh, I mean, either way, I'll take right. it. I like it. Mm-hmm. Good note. Um, okay, so you went to a performing arts high school. Mm-hmm. Tell me everything about this, because it is my dream. I wish that I did this. I wish that it was something like I was not even really aware that that was a thing. I mean, despite obviously the movie fame, um, but I did not know that that was like an option. I I was just like a regular ass kid that went to a regular ass high school. (laughs) But like, what was that like being surrounded? Like, is it just like everyone's on all the time? Like, I want the whole rundown. Um, it was, uh, it was awesome. I felt like, cause it was also the first year that the school had kind of converted into a performing arts school. That was the cool part. Um, it, it was awesome. It was like, you would, uh, it was done by blocks. My, my high school was all blocks. So it would do, you would do 80 minutes, uh, first period, 80 minutes, you know, second period and lunch, then 80 minutes, 80 minutes. Um, so you would do dance was one block. It was 80 minutes long. Um, and it was awesome. I think it was super, super cool. It was, I went to a very, very like diverse school. I mean, not everybody was very, very unique and different and yeah. You know, uh, yeah. What cool. else? I mean, obviously you gravitated towards the dance, but what else? Like what, else, like what is a typical day like in a school like this? <laughs> Do you dance, have to still uh, learn like math and English and all that other stuff? Oh like- yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you can That's escape boring. that. I wish, I wish. <laughs> I want to that, math okay, was I don't not, need that part. <laughs> math, math, was, math was not like my favorite subject at all. It was the no. worst. Likewise, I remember at one point I was like, I want to be a psychologist. I want to be like a psychologist, like a sports psychologist, which by the way, have I kind of turned into one with this podcast? <gasps> Maybe I sort of have. Am I like sort of a therapist on this? Not really. Um, but uh, but no, anyways, I was when I started like looking into like actually going to school, I was like, oh, I have to be good at math and science. This is not for me. Never mind. This is not my route. I I'm not. but what's funny is I remember like grade 12 sorry, 12th grade. That was my Canada showing, um, in 12th <laughs> grade. Um, God, I can't remember which, like, it might've just been like, I don't know, some kind of advanced math class that I had no business being in. So I truly stopped going. I never went, was never there, but I was like, I should probably show up to the exam. Right. And my teacher <laughs> hated me. And I like showed Yeah. I was like annoying. I thought I was super funny. Everyone's like, calm down. Um, but anyways, I tried to, I tried to go in to write the exam and he's like, you've literally not come to any of these classes. Like, why would you bother to show up to try to write the exam? And I was like, I had nothing better to do with my afternoon. And I thought this would be hilarious. He did not let me in the class. I did not pass. Um, okay. So full performing arts school, what did you have to do to audition to get into this? Okay. So because it was like, kind of like inner city ish, um, you didn't really have to audition. You just have to kind of be in the, um, in the district so you oh. have to be in the district um well, like you could not like some kid that had no desire to be a performer could still just show up and be like this is my school yeah <laughs> like, yeah okay. yeah yeah oh no. my gosh um, I, I think if like they felt like you weren't really like trying or something like that they probably could take you out and put you in something else okay yeah was anybody else like super famous from your school uh, the actor, um, what's his name? Oh my God, this is bad. <laughs> it's okay. I forget everything all the time. Emilio is good at cutting this stuff up to making it sound like we know things. Derek Luke. That's his name. <laughs> Der- I don't know who that is. I think he's an actor. He played, is it Derek Luke? He plays in the movie Antoine Fisher. Is that his name? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah. I think so. What, so. what other classes were you into aside from the dancing? 
what else did you gravitate towards? Were you like a drama person, a music theater person? I love musical theater. We actually okay. did a couple of, um, like I did singing too. And then um, we did a couple of like plays and, you know, performances that were like, you know, homage to like, so we, we did like a whole Michael Jackson tribute and things like that. And nice. we, we did uh, Rent, we did um, a chorus line. And uh, yeah, I was definitely into all that stuff. Yeah, dancing, singing, acting. Yeah. So when did wrestling enter the fray for you? I mean, I, I know the parallels obviously between both of those worlds, but it's like, you're either going to go down one path and you're auditioning for X, Y, and Z, or, you know, dancing for so-and-so or whatever, or you are like, where else in performing can I kind of fit in and find my groove? When did wrestling become that path that you wanted to walk down? I've always loved wrestling as a kid. I grew up, um, well, actually, it's so funny. I always say the story. Um, I <laughs> discovered wrestling through the video games. So I played Revenge. <laughs> it was the first game no, I played. No, wait, what? <laughs> yeah, I, wa- I played the wrestling game before I actually watched it on TV. Who would you play? Who would you be? So I would be like Rey Mysterio, Alex Wright, Disco Inferno, um, Chris Jericho, people like that. Yeah. <laughs> that is so funny. Okay. So when did you actually start watching wrestling? Uh, I think that was probably like maybe 2000, 2001. Maybe I, I don't think probably earlier, but I think when I became like a real, real fan, it was like very tail end of the attitude era and getting into the ruthless aggression. Okay. Gotcha. 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 So what about for training wise? Like when, like to seek out actually getting in the ring? Cause I mean, you were initially a manager to begin with, right? Yeah. Yes. So when did like the training aspect start to, to creep in? So yeah, while I was managing, I'm um, taking some bumps. Well, okay, so let's go before that. So uh, two of my friends were just like, Hey, like you love wrestling and stuff like that. You know, you're so, you're super athletic, you know, you're from your dance background or whatever. And he's like, why don't you just come to this place called, um, uh, East coast professional wrestling and like how you New Jersey. That's where I started. Um, and I basically was like, okay, like I'll try it out. So I kind of was training sporadically for like two years. I wasn't taking wrestling as serious. I didn't know someone like me could even make it this far. Like it was like, you know, this is unheard of. It's, it's not going to happen. Um, in terms of what, like what, like what made you think that you couldn't do that? Not seeing someone like yourself to be definitely. represented. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like, um, you know, people definitely had their doubts and even people in my own family were just like, I don't know about this baby. Like you are, you know, I such an anomaly and you're someone that's very, very different. And um, who knows if the world's going to take you know, to what you're doing and who you are. And um, yeah, but I definitely was just like, I had the energy um, of like, if I'm going to do this, I'm going to do it, you know, balls to the wall. I'm not going to hold back if I'm going to be me or no one at all. So I definitely came in with that moxie and kind of, you know, that's what that's how I felt. Like I was very honest about my, with myself about that. It's such a funny thing with wrestling because I do feel like wrestling and wrestlers generally are like a very welcoming group of people. Do you like they, they, yes, it's like, yes and no. Cause there's times that it's like, there's some stuff that is so stuck and like archaic. And as much as you try to push forward with things, it's like, oh my gosh, like how many people do we need to push this boulder that it can feel like it's such heavy lifting. But at the same time, I do feel like, There's so many different like niches and pockets where people can just be whoever they are. And they're so celebrated for being whoever they are. So it's sort of a catch 22 of like finding those spots that you fit in. But when you find those spots, like they certainly do exist. They do. I think that it's definitely a lot better in the 2020s as well. I think from the last decade until now, I definitely think it's a lot better. Um, I, when I came in in 2013, it definitely was not like that. It was, yeah. like, you know, it, there was, it was still progressing and, you know, it wasn't as bad, but um, it's gotten progressively better over the last decade for sure. And I think yeah. with people like myself and Nyla and Bowens and Layla and Kira and Diamante, Aubrey, I can name all of them all, uh, Sonia Deville, everybody. I yeah. feel like there's um, 
it's it, with the movement, you know, stuff like that, Jake Atlas, everybody's been kind of, you know, chipping at the wall and kind of, you know, we're going to break this wall down. Yeah. I feel like that's kind of what, what it is. Yeah. What do you think are some of the better ways or like ideas to do better storytelling for the LGBTQ community on television? Well, and it's, like, um, it's always like a loaded question of like, oh my gosh, like, I mean, I don't know to like come up with these ideas, but yeah, I mean, it's needs to be done. Um, hmm. I really think about it. <laughs> <laughs> you can think you're, about it. You can ruminate good. on it and we can come back to it, but no, it's, I mean, I think just like finding those ways to, to tell those stories better you know I would just had um go ahead yeah honestly I feel like just letting them be them letting letting the community be like letting everyone individually be themselves I think that's honestly the best best way to you know call it because like people you know as far as like storylines like feel like it has to be you know it has to push the envelope you know and I feel like it doesn't have to I feel like you can have you know, a storyline with an openly gay male and, you know, a a cisgender straight male um, and still be, you know, cool. Like, I feel like when you look at Bowens on TV, you don't think of Bowens as like, oh, the gay wrestler. He's he's just, he's He's just Anthony Bowen. Yeah. Yeah. So I feel like honestly just letting, like, even people, people don't look at Layla and even identify her really. Like they don't go to that, you know, immediately. I feel like just kind of letting everybody just be them. And even like with me, like I pitch storylines all the time that, you know, isn't about my sexuality, isn't about the way I look. It's just straight up like, you know, ideas that will just keep me in dialogue with the fans, you know, like 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 what kind of things, like what kind of ways do you think are that you wanted to highlight stuff like that? Um, just by, well, um, I'll just have, it's more about being used. Like I I can't really do it if I'm not really being used, but it's just more about just being on the forefront. Yeah. Um, Yeah. Yeah. Being seen. um, Yeah. Not, not the forefront, but you know what I mean? Like being seen, you know, by the audience, being in dialogue with them. You need to have that visibility and to be out there to make any sort of change. Right. 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 Yeah. I know it's funny. With the more, I'm sorry. Go ahead. (laughs) Yeah, with the more, like, I, you know, hopefully, like, with this year coming, I, you know, able to get opportunities. Um, Hopefully, I'll be able to, you know, tell those stories and be in the dialogue with them and kind of, like, give that representation from my point of view. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's such a, I feel like it's a conversation that I've definitely been having um, a lot, I feel like, either on this show or on my, on my serious show, where it's talking about diversity. And we've been talking a lot about, um, you know, black wrestlers being able to tell better stories and have better storylines and have better championship runs, et cetera, et cetera. And I think (laughs) also having this conversation about the LGBTQ community, being able to do these great storylines as well. I mean, yeah, I mean, you mentioned Sonia Deville. I know that that was something that she was fighting for a lot in WWE. And I, I really, I can't wait to see her get to do some of those stories she's so damn talented and she's so, so good I love her she's so, so great yeah she's I can't awesome. wait to see what she does but um yeah you're right I mean let's just let's get Sunny out there to begin with yeah we can tell <laughs> these stories let's yeah, get and, going and, and I want to you know definitely say like I love being at AEW and I think that um, it's awesome that AW allows all of their LGBTQ talent to be themselves mm-hmm. and let allow everyone in the community to, you know, just diversity in general, like allow them to embrace that. And the company does embrace it. Like we have, you know, Tony Khan is a brown man, Mega is a brown woman. You know, I feel yeah. like they are, you know, you know, uh, uh, being inclusive and, you know, allowing diversity to be seen for sure. So yeah. I think I definitely want to make that statement. I just, I'm just saying that I, you know, can't tell my own stories if I'm not shown. So sure. We'll we'll, we'll, we'll work on that, you know, (laughs) (laughs) we'll certainly work on that. 100%. Um, One of the things that I also really love that you have been doing was working with Joey Janela. I Mm -hmm. love (laughs) you to you two as like a tag team, I think is fantastic. Why are we not doing more of this? I loved you and Joey together. 
Uh, oh my god, teaming with Joey was crazy. I yeah, he's nuts. Loved it. <laughs> I love Janelle so much. Joey, Joey works very, very hard. I don't know if people really realize that he Hustles. works very hard, and he's so like he cares so much about this business. And you know, even like his match with your husband, like that match was amazing. Yeah. They're like that match so good. And I, think I think that Joey- was like one of John's like first big matches with AEW. Was with mm-hmm. Joey. I know John's a big fan of Joey's. Yes. Uh, Joey proves time and time again that he is, you know, just ready for any opportunity that's, that's thrown his way. He's awesome. And teaming with him, he always pushes me to step outside the box because sometimes I can be a little complacent and I'm very shy and very nervous. All of- Wait, you are? You're a shy and nervous person? Really? I am. Uh, I'm very shy and very nervous. I mean, I've definitely gotten better with the, with. Well, I was going to talk about that after, but with our feud, you know, after our tag team was over. I became a lot more like, I don't give a, you know, I'm going to get to that, you know, like I've gotten more intense and yeah, I would, I will say definitely before that, I definitely was like a little like, Ooh, I don't know if I should do this or, Ooh, you know, uh, how do I do that? Uh, uh, like enjoy would definitely basically help me step outside the box and be a more serious, uh, be taken ser- more serious for sure. Mm-hmm. That's interesting. I never would have thought of you as like being a nervous person or like a nervous performer or anything like that because you never see it you always just seem like you were like ready to go yeah I how do you how do you like overcome that I, it's hard it is hard I mean I've definitely had moments when I've like felt nervous or you go in like I would like go through like these like ebbs and flows where there's times that I felt like I was like super confident and good and I wouldn't shake yeah. wouldn't waver nothing like that but then there's other times that I'm like oh shit what <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna get really deep for a second. Um, Me I haven't too. told I haven't told this on a podcast ever before, or even really publicly. So I think a lot of the, a lot of ugh, my biggest issue, honestly, like being a, being a wrestler, was the fact that it was more so in my own head for sure. But um, being having that complex in my head of oh my god, if I'm like this, um, this is too aggressive and too masculine. And when I'm like tough, you know, it makes me it it, it, it like creates like a complex in my head um and then I feel like um like toughness isn't attractive or like you know appealing when I do it um because I just feel like I wasn't born a cisgender I wasn't born a woman so um I think a lot of times like I would hold back because I would want to I would hold back with fear of not being seen as attractive and feminine like I am um so for the longest time a lot of time like in a lot of matches I would definitely like you know wouldn't really like go full force the way I really could and you know I'm I saying that's right yeah I think I think a lot of times I was um, very very like scared and I, de- I definitely didn't know mentally which way to really really be but I re- learned that I can be super strong and powerful and tough and jacked and muscular and still be sexy and feminine and all that stuff and I think that that was like the biggest thing for sure it's such an interesting juxtaposition because I mean I've definitely felt that way before if I feel like like even just like you know going to the gym and the way that I'm working out to the way that my body looks to different things like that that it's so funny the way that our brains work and what we yeah. think of as being feminine and what we think yeah. of as being beautiful and what we think other people think of as mm. being beautiful and feminine. It can be such a mind. It f- is. It's crazy rather than just like fully leaning into these like incredible qualities that you have, you feel that you want to downplay them. What yeah. f- is with that? Why are we know. like that? I would stop working out because I feel like I would be emasculating men. I would, you know, pretend I wasn't as strong as I was. Like I would purposely lose at like, you know, battles of arm rest. Like just That's weird things. Like all my all my I life, get it. Like, yeah, all my life I would definitely like try not to be seen uh, in a masculine way because I didn't want like I didn't want that I don't want people to I want guys because being that I'm, I wasn't born a female I I wanted guys to be attracted to me still by just being me yeah. so I felt like I had to be as womanly as possible or feminine as possible for them to you know find me somewhat attractive you know what I mean like it's so weird like that's it, bad it is, yeah <laughs> it's just it's such a and like 
Okay. So h- how have you overcome this? Do you, or is this something you still are struggling with? Mm-hmm. So with this whole storyline and development, development of my character, the beautiful badass, Mm -hmm. it's literally making that statement now of I'm tough, I'm strong, I'm sexy, and I'll still kick your ass. So I feel like now that I've kind of developed with the storyline with Joey and, you know, getting involved with all that blood and, you know, like (laughs) hard to hard stuff. You sick sons of bitches. (laughs) um you know and just being inspired by deathmatch wrestling and like um just all of these people that are like going super super hard on tv and really really making a name for themselves and just really just going all out and you know for lack of better term making an ass of themselves by just not caring Mm -hmm. I definitely use that as inspiration um I also just feel like too with my career going forward um, I don't want to be, you know, continuously in the back burner. Like I want people to say like, yo, Sunny, Sunny can go too. Sunny doesn't, you yes. know, Sunny's not just like, you know, just some filler wrestler, like, no, like Sunny can go. So that's what, definitely, that's what I wanted to portray. And I wanted that to be real. And so I really, really, you know, got dug deep for that. And I really, really felt in my heart and soul that it doesn't really matter how feminine I am and how womanly you know or how strong I look I can still be you know feminine and sexy of course and like I think it's really cool too I mean you talked about like you know when you started in like 2013 to where we are now and just everyone's minds are more open everybody (laughs) is all these different body types and different shapes and whatever (laughs) are so much more visible on television we're I think everyone's idea of what beauty is is morphing and is continuing to morph and like thank god for that because like trying to fit into all of these molds of like and and, i mean no shade at all but it's like when you look at like what the initial idea of like being a diva was to how Mm -hmm. we are looking at uh female wrestlers nowadays is like holy shit like it's so different and it's so nice to see Yeah, but even like interesting enough too, like I, when I look at other people, I don't have these same thoughts for them like I do myself. I I thought China was sexy. I thought, you know, I think Nikki Bella is super sexy. I I think Beth Phoenix is sexy. It's like, they're all different kinds of body types. Yeah. And I didn't think that China was less womanly or because Beth is, oh my God, Beth Beth is a goddess. Don't even get me started on Beth. I am like Beth's like fan club member number one. (laughs) I love Beth Phoenix. Yeah. And all these different beautiful, strong body types. And Molly Holly was so fit and gorgeous. And, yeah. you know, Daz is stunning and Jacqueline and all these tough women. And, um, I just like, I never thought about, I never thought once, like that doesn't look womanly or feminine. I, it's so weird that I have this own, it's all in my own mind. Yeah. No, and I know. Yeah. My friends all the time, they would be like, you know, like, people like there's a lot of men out there who think that these women are beautiful and then think that toughness and, and, you know, strength is beautiful. So just embrace that. And, um, yeah, I, 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 I wow. I just, it's crazy how you really reflect and really I like, know. No, I know, <laughs> I, I know. And I get it. Cause I mean, I think that, I think so many people can relate to that, to feeling that way and feeling like either not enough or too much. And I need to scale it back, but like, yeah. is there anything worse than knowing that you are just getting in your own way by thinking about these things. And it's, it's not easy to just acknowledge that and shake it off. It's like, no, it's like, it takes so long to like figure out accepting yourself, accepting your body, accepting these like gifts that you've been given and highlighting them rather than trying to like ignore them. Cause it's not the normal thing. It's so crazy. <laughs> Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It is like, I mean, I don't know if it's, it's like a thing that comes with age, I think, and understanding yourself. And also, I mean, yes, the visibility of seeing more people like yourself on television, like the Beths, like the Chinas, like the, you know, and Nikki Bella of somebody that's just like jacked and like looks insane. Mm-hmm. Like Nikki's the best. Love me some Nikki Bella. Love me some Brie Bella. Give me all of them. I love Mama Bella. All of them. Yes. Um, but it's funny because I even like even just for like myself, it's like I always remember like when I look back at pictures from like when I first started in WWE. I mean, I was like 27, something like that. Now I'm like 36. So looking back, I'm like, oh my god, I look so like 
thin. But it's like, all I would do is just do cardio. I would only do cardio and I've always been super strong, but I would never lean into it. I would always just be like, no, nah, I'll just do cardio. I'll just lift like five, 10 pound weights. It's like, bitch, you know, you can lift more than that. You know, you're stronger <laughs> than that. Like use your body for what it's right. for. Like I have super strong legs and I've always been really like just aware of them. If someone will be like, oh my God, you, your legs look jacked. I'm like, shut the f- up. I know. Like, <laughs> shut up. Like I would hate it. But right. then it's like, what a dumb thing. Like, why feel like that? It's it's so weird. They're like stereotypes that have been ingrained in our brains from such a young age. Oof. It's a deep dive. Right also, there. can I can I just say how like you're literally aging backwards? Like <laughs> you you're literally aging backwards. And like me, like I was a fan of yours for a long time. Oh, Thank you. Going back, like when you were doing Total Divas and you were doing like the after party stuff. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> after Total Divas. Oh, f- and you would always stir oh. the pot. <laughs> <laughs> I love a little pot stirring. Yeah. I, it's my, my wheelhouse. I love it. I'm a huge fan. Um, also, I just like to circle back to Beth really quickly because I yeah. love that Beth was one of those women that was such a huge role model for women when we didn't even know, we didn't even know what we had in a Beth Phoenix at the time. Completely and the agree. fact that Completely. she came up through a certain generation, went away, and now she's wrestling again as yes. her prime yes. self in a generation of these newer women and these different these just different types of women. I love that Beth is back in the mix with that, that she can get the proper flowers that she deserves. She totally does deserve it. Oh my God. She was a part of like such a wonderful, I, she's definitely a part of the revolution to me, in my opinion. Of course. For sure. Agreed. And, uh, and Mickey as well. Like it definitely mm-hmm. have the Mickey. Mickey is incredible, incredible. And I'm so glad to see that, you know, she's having the opportunity to be a part of that company and to, yeah. you know, be- it's, so cool. oh, it's such an amazing time right now. Everybody's doing super, super, super well. It's crazy. Uh, it, it is really cool to see so many different outlets and everyone's thriving and yeah, these, all yeah. these forbidden doors are just being blasted open. And it, it's so cool. So that being said, who do you want to work with? What are like some of your dream scenarios of people that you would love to tangle it up with? Okay. So it's so funny. So I'll reveal a little tea. <laughs> So Damn I was it. supposed to, so I, I've always been a huge Rob Van Dam fan. I've always been like super, super like, you know, obsessed, like big, big fan. And um, I was supposed to work him at an indie show. Uh, well, it was supposed to be like a ta- I think it was supposed to be uh, myself. And I think it was Matt Hardy and um, Mark Quinn versus, I think it's Rob Van Dam. I, I can't remember. Okay, Katie Forbes and, you know, I think it was yeah. going to be like a, Next time, match, whatever. Mm-hmm. And I got vaccinated on the day before and it took me out. Oh, crap. <laughs> so I was like, and I was maybe like a replacement, I think. I don't even think it was intent. I don't even think I was supposed to actually do the match. But um, Quinn was like, you know, like, you know, there's like this spot for you. And maybe, you know, you can do it. I didn't know that was going to happen until after two. So he was such a jerk for telling me that <laughs> <laughs> way after. <laughs> But, um, that would have been amazing. Oh my I God. Know, to yay. be like working with like Matt Hardy alone. Like that's super that. cool. But then like Love. against Rob Van Dam. Damn. Yeah. yeah. Damn. Yeah. <laughs> so that needs to be revisited. Also, can we talk about the fact that he also ages in reverse and it's crazy? I he's don't. not aged. In like the last decade, he's not aged. He's the same. I don't understand it. <laughs> Me neither. <laughs> crazy I truly do not understand it um okay so aside from eventually getting back in the ring with Rob Van Dam who who else whether it's somebody like within AEW like a storyline that you would love to get into other people in other companies like what what are some dream situations bucket list things for Sunny Kiss hmm. I'm like so like bring it all to me you know what I mean like I definitely would love to be able to just work with everybody in our company. Like we have so many awesome, you know, amazing veterans in our company that I would love to work with. Um, but as far as like storylines, um, I just recently had an idea and I was 
going to pitch it to TK. I wasn't really sure yet. Um, I was going to pitch because, you know, there's like top flight, right? This, they're an amazing tag team, Dante and Darius. Mm-hmm. Um, I, Darius, I don't know when his return is, but when, it, when he does come back, um, I was going to pitch to be like the flight attendant. Like, obviously it would just be like, I would still wear my, wear my gear, but it would be like yeah. sexy, like flight attendant gear it was just really it may have sounded you know a little cheesy but I was like they're gonna be fun you know no, I love things like that I like for me I love things like that in wrestling I love when stuff is supposed to be like fun and like yeah lean into that stuff I think it's great yeah I mean too I, I definitely think like it would be an awesome dynamic um with the three of us so yeah who knows? <laughs> um, okay, so you're a huge nostalgia junkie. Let's get into yeah. that. Um, I was doing a little research on this. When you say that, I mean, I know you kind of mentioned some of the bands and stuff that you listen to, whether it's like NSYNC, Britney, a little Janet. That's where some of like the dance inspiration and whatnot comes from. What What do you listen to before you get hyped for a match? <laughs> Are we going always, nostalgia route? Oh, well, I'm always in the nostalgia binge. Uh, that's just my life right now. Um, uh, I listen to everything. Uh, I, I'm a big, 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 probably the biggest Limp Bizkit fan in the world. Um, <laughs> I love Limp Can Bizkit. Can we not I, get like some way for you to work with Fred Durst? That seems possible. I was on stage with Limp Bizkit three years ago. It was the coolest thing. <laughs> Did you get to dance and stuff? So, okay. So I was on stage with him. It was Rock Allegiance. And um, he called a lot of fans on stage. And I was a little like... I feel like I was robbed of a moment because <laughs> this, is me being, this is me being selfish, a selfish fan. Um, they're all, you know, this new generation with the cameras everywhere. They're all on the stage and um, get the cameras in his face and they're all running around really rowdy. Um, I feel like you're on stage. You're on stage with Limp Bizkit. Obviously, this is a huge part of a lot of our childhoods. Soak in that moment. We all Why did it running- for the nookie. It- <laughs> yes um um and I feel like they were just kind of running around just like with their phones and their it was just, it was really packed it was like 40 50 people on stage though Maybe so they all it. got in your way and got in your light when you could have had a moment with Fred Durst yes because I would have been singing um all the lyrics and just dancing <laughs> with him and having fun I was it sucked but um it was still really really cool to have that you know be able to do that and um it was funny because he said um the biggest Limp Bizkit fan you know come up on stage and all my friends are like that's you that's you <laughs> super funny he called super me by funny. name here I go yeah. and then oh he, that's funny you say that so he was trying to crowd surf um obviously you can't crowd surf you can't body surf someone if you have your hand phone in your hand but so he he was doing that and he fell right in front of me because people were not holding him up I know shut up fell right in front of me and guess what he goes he goes, oh, it's the wrestler. I said, oh. shut up. Yeah, I freaked out. I was like, no freaking way. He knows who I am. Oh my God. That's like a huge deal. I feel like this needs to be in like the bio for your Twitter. Sunny Kiss, known by Fred Durst. Right. <laughs> yeah, no, it was super cool. But I definitely like, um, Limp Bizkit is, you know, in my heavy rotation uh, place all the time. I just um, recently purchased his five new albums. You know, the band, the Boy Man Five. They're Wait, from- what songs did they do? That's familiar to me. Maybe when the lights go, go out. out. Yeah. Da-da-da. Oh yeah. Oh yes. yeah. Yes. So I just bought their new album. Uh, I love, you know, all the things from the era, all the post brunch stuff. Um, yeah, I was listening to Crossfade recently, Three Doors Down. Um, honestly, I like, I like a lot of the, I like a lot of rap stuff too, a lot of R and B. Um, it depends it depends on my mood too. So I'll definitely get in like a seventies soul kind of vibe too. I like sixties mm-hmm. rock. I like a lot of different stuff. Yeah, um, yeah, a lot of different stuff. What about like <laughs> TV shows? Um, I honestly. <laughs> I watch reality TV a lot, but <laughs> I also binge watch a lot of like crime documentaries and First 48 and like all that. Well, especially crime. when you're living in a hotel, that's what's on all the time. Yes, but right? I love it. I, I no, I love that first, too. I could watch First 48 for 12 hours straight. There's times <laughs> where I've definitely done that. Like I've ordered food, I've ordered, I've had snacks just laid out on my couch. 
and watch the first 48 oh, that for sounds like, like a hours. perfect day that sounds it, so nice my I like love- perfect like date would be like honestly just like shacked up on the couch and watching tv like I'm the most simplistic person like I'm super super easy to like navigate with I'm super like easy do you have a type when it comes to dating <laughs> what do we like what's on the vision board not really I would say a type because I like all different kinds of guys um um I'm not as shallow as I used to be. You know, I'm 28. Oh, did you used to be super shallow? I wouldn't say like that. I was used to be shallow. I just had, I had some shallow things. Like I wanted to see the guy who's taller than me. Then again, we're going back to that. Oh my God, feminine, masculine, ridiculousness. Mm -hmm. Um, So I definitely want to date a guy who's taller than me. I definitely want to date date a guy who like had a certain, like I love beards. Love a beard. (laughs) I love a beard too. I'm with you. Right. But when John clean shaves his face, I'm like, who are you? Who's this man? <laughs> Freaks me out. Right. Yeah. It's just like he didn't have a beard when we first started dating, though, but I've become quite hooked on the beard that he has now. Yeah, the beards are sexy. They, just, they are nice. Very, very sexy. But, but I yeah, don't I'm not, I'm like I don't it's a it's a fine line because I don't want like I don't like when his beard's like super messy. For a while it was insane. He's got like thick, thick beard hair too. But if it's like a very well manicured beard, I don't like that. It has to be like in between. Oh, I get it. I get what you're saying. <laughs> like trying, but not trying. No, totally. I yeah, I get what you're saying. Um, definitely has to have has to have some organized chaos. Yes. Yes. Okay. So a beard is on the list. Anything else <laughs> beyond the beard? We just like a bearded it's, man. It's it's not a necessity though. I would okay. I would be lying. I would be lying to you if I said I look for beards only. I would, <laughs> yeah, but um, beard or bust. That's it. <laughs> I don't mind. I know, like certain things that I do like, but not a necessity. I like I like bald guys. Oh, know. okay. But, Interesting. Yeah. Okay. Great. Well, hey, you just, all you can do is put out the feelers. You know. Let I also know. like guys with long hair. Well, but I also now like you're that asking for a lot. Yeah, but you I want no like- hair. You want all the hair. I like- yeah, I don't know. Like I'm just super all over the place. Like okay. I, I like all different kinds of stuff. You know. Um. So back to nostalgia stuff. What about fashion wise? Are you nostalgic when it comes to fashion? Do you see this top, girl? Yes, I do see that top. <laughs> it's very much. Give me, give me a then, little a baby blade. tea crop top. Look at this. Yes. Blade. You yeah. know what? Sometimes I think about that, that I'm like, do I want one of the original juicy like track suits? Do I need one? I sometimes I have six velour track suits. Yeah. I'm a fan. I am a Y2K shoddy. Like I am. <laughs> yes. Like I am. I am the type of person you'll, I'm the type of girl you'll see in a Nelly video. And, you know, <laughs> all that stuff. Like I definitely like, Le, le, I, I watch videos on Y2K fashion and music and pop culture. I'll another thing I'll do too. I'll sit around and binge watch interviews from the '90s and you know check out oh, the like style. That. It was yeah. such a simpler time. Yeah, yeah, totally. I I just love the fashion and love the you know the crop tops with the low rise jeans and all. Okay, that low stuff. rise jeans can suck a big one. Um, I'll put that out there, but. Uh... <laughs> You know, what's funny as I was thinking about this the other day, I was like, man, like I really feel for women that had a child. And then when they came back from having the baby was like, oh, low rise jeans is all we know. And that's what you've got to get into. Like, holy, that's a tall order. I would have been wearing Spanx for a long time. Yeah, I definitely think it it was a trend that people, most people would probably keep in the past. I don't know. I just just like the look of it because I just feel like. Brittany pulled it off so well and she sure did. And yeah, I feel like all these women pulled it off so well. Christina there's like, pulled there, it off there's really a whole well video. too. I'm sorry. Christina pulled it off really well too. Yeah. yeah Is there was... a better look than Christina Aguilera in the dirty video? <gasps> I think not. When Liv paid homage to that, oh I died. My Lord. She I, it. Oh my God. I was like, get it, girl. <laughs> That was hot. I was so good with was, like the black streaks through her hair and everything. It was one hell of a look. Fantastic. Get Killed. it, girl. Liv actually really crushes it in the uh, in the gear yeah. game. 
Yeah, she pulls out some looks. It's like, who I always who comment on her stuff. I was from? like, <laughs> I think it's with two with Trent because I love Trent. Trent is my girl. Trent's I always comment. Amazing. I always comment on their stuff. Like, let me borrow this gear. <laughs> it Trent, up. Trent says it to me too because I, I had a clueless inspired uh, share gear, uh, share, share, share gear from Clueless. And uh, oh, yeah. And Trent, Trent goes to me and she's like, let me borrow this when you're done with it. <laughs> But yeah, yeah. doesn't like, Sandra make trends gear too, or no? Yes, I'm she not does, sure. Right? She still does. I know she did. Yeah, yeah she did for a long time. Like yeah, but yeah, no, they they both crush it in the gear department for sure. Uh, um, talk to me about your family. What's your family dynamic? Who like give me give me a family rundown? I love knowing what people's like family lives are like. <laughs> what you grew up with. I love knowing all this stuff. I like to uh, paint a picture. Yeah. Um, my family's cool. Um, I feel like um, I'm trying to <laughs> describe them. Uh, we're, we're not as close as I would want us to be, to be honest. Like, I'm not going to just sit here and lie. We're not as close as we, I would want us to be. But we try. We really do try. Yeah. Um, my brother and my sister are very different from me. Um, I actually have an older sister and a younger sister. They both don't live with me in a who were, they weren't in my immediate family. Mm. Um, they were with different, my dad had children with different women. And yeah. My oldest sister was born in 79. So she was like always, always like much older than us. Yeah. Um, I have a younger sister who lived with her mom. And then it was me, my brother, my sister from my, both my parents. And you know, they were, we're all very different. Um, you know, we're all into different things. Um, my brother is like wants to be like an entrepreneur. My sister is like um, a psychologist, and you know we're all kind of just into like different things. Yeah. What do they make of your career? Um, they <laughs> kind of figured I would be doing wrestling at some point. Uh, they're definitely supportive. I don't think they un- really, really, truly understand what it you know what it really means to me. Yeah. But uh, yeah. Have they been out to a show? Have they been able to like see you in action? My mom, my sister, and my nieces, yes. What do they my, think? My dad. <laughs> no. Um, no, my dad. <laughs> what, I don't Is think it because dad. he it, he's just not a wrestling fan? Uh yeah, it's complicated with my dad. <laughs> okay. Gotcha. Gotcha, it, it gotcha. Is, it, it's a little complicated. Um yeah. Uh, my mom, my sister, my nieces, they all loved it. My nieces, honestly, I think um, my youngest, no, I mean, no, my oldest niece, she, like, wants to, like, be a wrestler herself. Like, she's super, she'll watch um, all of Charlotte and Sasha Banks' matches, like, literally all day long. <laughs> and she's just like, you know, Auntie, Auntie Sunny, like, I want, I want, I want a Charlotte figure for Christmas. And I'm just like, <laughs> I got you. Like, I- I love Sasha Banks. She's super cool. I'm just like, it's, it's awesome. You have an action figure, don't you? I do not. Ugh! The audacity. Girl, you tell me. <laughs> I, I got scanned for it, though. Well, about, okay. So the about, are... about, about two and a half years ago. Oh, okay. Well, listen, it's time to start. You know what you got to do is I love a good online petition. <laughs> Online I mean, petitions I mean, are where I like to go to get shit done. It works like 40% of the time, but I hey. wouldn't be opposed. Yeah, <laughs> I wouldn't be opposed. That work your magic. Work your magic, nay nay. Who wouldn't want a sunny kiss action figure? That's what I'm saying. I hope they make my booty like accurate size. I was just, just gonna just say just no, <laughs> not just kidding. We need to see this booty pop in in an action figure because, like, oh my god, it would be the best. This needs to happen. Um, okay. <laughs> well, internet, we now know what to do. Yeah. We now know that it is upon us to become the, the knights to, uh, to go to battle for a sunny kiss action figure. We certainly need this in our lives. I love let, that. Let them hear it. Run up in comments. Hell yeah. Comments. Hell yeah. Run up in comments. So 2022, what, uh, what, what do you want to do? What's, what are some of the goals that you have that you want to achieve? I mean, whether, I mean, we've talked in the ring a lot. What about outside the ring? What other kind of things do you want to do? Uh, I definitely want to hopefully move out of New Jersey. 
Okay, where do you want to go? Um, I definitely want to um go to New Jersey. I'm thinking Florida or Orlando or Charlotte. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what happens. Uh, yeah. It's just what's kinda... what's the holdup? How like I feel like we can get you out of there. This can happen. <laughs> um. I don't really know. I just kind of, it's, it's more so me. It's, it's definitely my own, it, it's me in my own head for sure. Yeah. I'm another You're one. Out there. <laughs> Moving is great. I feel like it's, there's it's something. A, it's a hassle though. It's a hassle. Oh, it's a kick in the d- 100%. <laughs> Holy shit. Like we just moved. I can't even say we just moved. We've lived here for like three months now. And every time I like walk into a room, I'm like, oh, who's going to decorate this who's gonna like it's so much work there's still like well we don't have boxes anywhere still thank god but like it is a lot of work moving is a lot of work but there's something so fun about like unpacking in a new house and it is away, and that, that checking new, out your like, neighborhood that house like fresh smell yes yeah and it also like just like on a personal level of like growing as a person going to a new city and I mean if you went to Florida or something you'd have so many friends around you anyways oh yeah um if I moved to Orlando I definitely would have friends on almost every, in every neighborhood and yeah. yeah you could not go to the grocery store without running into a wrestler in Florida yeah and I'm definitely like strongly considering it it's just more so a matter of like really like settling on when and where but my my yeah, because are, like my lease is are, up here in june so then it's time to get on a little zillow and start doing some searches because it needs to happen so everything about new jersey is awesome i love love new jersey i was born and raised here it's a wonderful state it's actually very 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 diverse very unique um um place to live because it's so like everything is accessible and you know, it's definitely, it's very different from every place in the, probably the world. I just feel like it's so diverse and cool. Jersey and, gets a weird, bad rap. Why do people hate on Jersey so much? I don't know, but it's, Jersey's super progressive. And it's, yeah. it's it, the only thing about Jersey that sucks, and this is where I was getting to, I love everything about New Jersey, but the cost of living is absolutely terrible. The cost Ooh. of living is dangerously high. And yeah, yeah. like, it's like, like I you know make the money that I make and I'm just like dang I spend this amount of money a month I know it's shocking it's so upsetting um when I I was living in New York when John and I first met and he was in Vegas and I was like well I guess it makes more sense for me to move out there with you, you blah 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 when I moved out there I was like oh my god why have I been spending so much money and rent there it was great. Like I love living in New York. I love living in Toronto. Toronto's notoriously super expensive too. I love Toronto. So. Ugh, isn't it the best? I My favorite place city. to visit in the world. People, people always go, Oh, I like Madrid or I like, um, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like always ever like create like places all over the world. Yeah. My favorite place is Toronto, Ontario. Why? <laughs> what do you love so much about? Cause I mean, I'm on board with you. I love Toronto. Like I'm not such London, a homer. like not Taiwan, like not all these places. I love Toronto. Ontario. Yes. <laughs> and people yes. Think I'm super crazy. Like, like, why is that your favorite place to like visit? It's it magical. Is, so, I love Toronto so much. What like, is it about Toronto that, that, that pumps you up? I don't know. <laughs> You're just drawn to it. You gravitate toward it's the, it. I don't know if it's the, it's the all of the experiences that I had there. I've been to Toronto maybe like a hundred times at this point. Um, I love it. I love being maybe there. Here's what needs to happen. You need to find you a nice Canadian boy and settle yeah. down in Canada. You yeah. will not regret it. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like Canadian men, they're, they're super nice. That's for sure. They are. You'll at least have that going for you. That's such a stereotype, but it's generally pretty true. Um, generally, right. That's what needs. And, oh, I mean, you want to talk about a good beard. Canada knows how to do a good beard. Oh, I know. We invented the beard. Yeah. Oh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. oh, I love that. Yeah. Toronto's great. But anyways, when you move away from somewhere where you're paying an arm and a leg to live and then you move somewhere like florida where it's so much cheaper your whole world opens up it's crazy you've got 
extra money to go on trips or to like, you know, buy some of the things that you wanted. It's, it is such a game changer. Um, is your whole family still in Jersey? Is that why you're, why you stay there for the most part? My immediate family, they're all pretty, my brother lives in Pennsylvania. My sister lives about like 10 miles away. Not too, too bad. Um, maybe it's a little bit less than that. Um, yeah, no, it's, my immediate family's here, but I'm not, I honestly, at this point, I'm kind of just like, like whatever you're over it you're over I'm for, it it's time I, yeah. to go it's me it's my mind I'm procrastinating for sure it's definitely okay me. well the jig is up the jig <laughs> is up you're leaving in but June my you're mom's moving. family a lot of them live in Alabama and the south Mississippi and stuff like that Ooh. and my father's coming from South Carolina okay see it's, yeah I, it's, it's so not. funny so I was uh I, I did one of those 23 and me thingies have you done that oh, before oh what'd you get back it was so crazy so obviously it's primarily African heritage yeah. um East East Africa and West Africa. Most I know my dad's family. A lot of them are from East Africa. Um, and then there, there's my father has heritage in the Middle East, uh, in um, Europe, and they're a little bit of British. Obviously, there was some British. There was Middle East. There was uh, like one, one eighth of Filipino. It was like Ooh. whoa, that was an interesting one. Um, yeah. that my mom's, I think his father's father's mother. There's some Italian there. Yeah, I was like, oh snap. But yeah, it was primarily like East East and West African with some European, West Asian. Oh, it doesn't, yeah, That's it was super, great. super, super, super cool. I've uh, always been really interested to check one of those out. But yeah, I'm like, mine's just gonna say like, I don't know, like maybe like a little Scottish or Irish or British, something like that. I don't I, know. It, I feel like there wouldn't be anything that exciting in mine. You don't think but so? maybe you I, never know. You might be shocked. You might be shocked. Like, you never know. I was on there too. And so uh, and that's where I was getting to, like, as far as like, you know, seeing where people are from, like South Carolina, all that stuff. And it kind of shows like, like your relatives have migrated here. And then it'll, it'll show you like your family members and your cousins and your third cousin and fourth cousin. And it's like, I have full blown, 100% white, or, <laughs> like full blown cousins. Third Shut cousin, up. Like, third, and I'm like, oh, like, holy, like, <laughs> like, how are you my third cousin? And you're like, 100% white like that's, wow but, but obviously with DNA that's so cool stuff, yeah I was just like that's super super nuts but I thought it was super cool I, I connected with a couple people on there too and I'm just like hey guys you know <laughs> like but they would kind of message me and they were just like hey like I would love to like you know find more of my relatives and I kind of said the same thing to yeah. them it was, it was such really a, neat. it's super 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 cool I think everyone should probably do it and you know, really, really yeah, I mean, the fact that that's an option that we have to like really go into our own family heritage and our bloodline and all that, it is pretty cool to check out. Yeah, yeah. I it's certain things too, like my mom um, is a direct descendant of the Creek Muscogee tribe, and um, you kind of like think like your percentages are going to go more one way, and you're mm-hmm. just like, holy, holy, it's not like how do I have more European than Native American? I was like, what. Wow. But yeah, my, my mom is a direct descendant. So I was like, that's interesting. interesting. Yeah. yeah. But I think that also too, with your siblings, like you guys can all develop, DNA, like you could have the same parents, but you can, your percentages can be different. You could develop the DNA in a different way. Weird. Yeah. Cause you can develop from your grandfather, from your great grandfather, from your mother, from your father. Like you can develop it in a different way than anybody else could. Huh. Yeah, you know what, John and I actually had, we had the kits to do it. And then a friend of ours who's like a scientist, he's like, don't do those. You're just sending the government your spit and your DNA. And we're like, wait, what? So we ended up not doing it. But I think that's pretty stupid because, I mean, everybody already has all of our, everyone has our information. Uh, yeah, anyways, and honestly, just don't Also, just crime. like, let's just, upload it. Whatever. And don't, don't commit crimes. You'll be fine. Don't commit yeah. crimes. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> You'll be fine. Like, I don't. True. <laughs> Strong I, I point. Think, I think you'll be okay. I don't <laughs> think out of the millions of people that have sent their DNA in and that DNA that they have it on hand in general, we'll be fine. I don't think that your DNA would be compromised out of all the DNA that's out there. It's too much work. Yeah, no, I, yeah. I, I, I really do want to revisit it though. It's, yeah, they sat in our yeah. cupboards for so long that I was like, we should really do that. And then we just never got around to doing it. So I'm going to put that on my to-do list. I think that you're probably very shocked. Yeah. I think See that's what Nora's like, made up of. A lot of people are out here thinking that they're like, you know, 
you know, like a little bit of this or a little bit of that. And really they're probably like a lot more of something else. Yeah. Like I know, I know someone who thought that they were mostly British, but turns out they were like mostly Irish and they were like, Oh what? Yeah. yeah. Crazy. Huh? Um, okay. Last thing I want to talk to you about is some food. What are your like go-tos for food? What's like your indulgences? Love Indian. I love Indian oh, food. Yes. It's, it's amazing. Um, super, super, super big fan of veneer and things like that you know I'm mostly I'm mostly vegetarian so I try to ah. stick to the, pe- the oh paneer. wait I did know that I saw that on your rundown that you were yeah mostly vegetarian yeah mostly vegetarian um you know I think I'm developing like some sort of like allergies to the vegan food I don't know if it's the soy I don't know if it's like wheat or something like that but sometimes like regretfully so like I'll have to have some fish or something because like I feel like when I eat vegan stuff all day long, I think it kind of messes with me a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes it definitely does. And I'm like, ah, like if I could just cut all this out and just be completely like plant-based, I would. Um, but yeah, I mean, mostly it's Indian and Indians to go to veg- vegetarian, serve vegetarian stuff. I'll make my own from scratch and things like that. So God, I, I do love good Indian. I actually made um, a chicken curry slow cooker thing on Monday. Ooh, it was quite good. I bet yeah, it was very. It wasn't as curry ish as I would like it to be. My my ratios might have been off a little bit, but it was still pretty good. Still all right. I'm sure, it was amazing. Hello, Renee. Good. Hello, oh, duh. Yeah. Also, you're a certified um, yoga instructor. Is this true? I am. That is correct information. Yes, yes. I actually fresh out of high school was one of the first before I went to college and everything. Like I graduated college only two years, three years ago. Yeah. Um, so I went to get my certificate from Bright Spirit Training in Hoboken, New Jersey. It was such an amazing experience. It takes and a really long time, doesn't it? It's, a, it's like a seven or eight, eight month like course. Yeah. I had a blast though. I had such a blast doing that. And, um, I love Hatha yoga. I think yoga is very beneficial for a lot of people. And I definitely. What's Hatha yoga? That's like the so hot- thing. It's like the vinyasa. So it's like a, it's, it's a little more of a slower pace. Okay. Yeah. Um, no, not slow. It's like, it's, it's definitely like a more moderate pace. I would say restorative yoga is like definitely the best for like athletes. Um, the hot vinyasa yoga. Oh, love. Awesome. I love a good flow. Yeah. That, that's basically, yeah. Hot yoga is like the vinyasa. Basically it's almost the same thing. Ashtanga yoga is super fun it's more of an athletic practice you know you're doing handstands and headstands and stuff like that and splits and that's always super fun <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um have you ever like instructed a class like fully do you like I I've feel never like you'd done be a hell fully. of an instructor no I did I did so uh, the funny thing is when I got into wrestling and we would do like practice or whatever we would do like yoga sessions beforehand and they would have me basically instruct all the wrestlers and basically go into like a whole like 30 45 minute flow with them and you know that was always fun too I never really done like a full full like class in a studio um but yeah uh that was it, it was such an awesome experience I miss I miss doing it the way I was doing it I don't do it as much anymore I kind of just now I kind of got back into like dancing as like my work way of working out <laughs> good because that's just, nice yeah. though that's great <laughs> it's like funny how you like go through older. like ebbs and flows of like what you want to do for workouts I'm I'm so like that yeah like, yeah. yeah no I I definitely so. wanted to not feel so stiff like I feel oh. like with the lifting of the weights and also getting older um saying that's so weird I know. <laughs> oh I know aging and uh, I definitely wanted to get back to my roots and really, really feel like loose and, you know, know, get back to it. Yeah, of course. No, I know. I actually just found like a really great yoga spot in town and I've been, I'd say I've been going, but that's a huge lie. Um, I went a few times and then I was like, I just need to go to the actual gym and like burn legit calories right now. I don't have time to just stretch it out. I got to fucking, I got to sweat it out. Um, So I'll have to revisit it later. Um, all right. So we do know 2022, you'll be moving. That'll be great. We're going to see some better storylines for you on television. We're going to have you out there front and center, more sunny kiss in our lives. We're going to work on the action figure. 
These are all things for 2022. Did I miss anything? Yes. And just enjoying life. Um, 2020 was my year of uh, accountability, I think. Um, and then 2021 kind of carried that on to uh, really, really just reflecting on who you are and what you're doing and, um, you know, all the things that you could be doing, all the things you could do less of, procrastinating, so I need to get it together. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah. So um, 2022 is the year of stability for me, and I want to continue to um, work on that and just really, yeah, really just be happy and enjoy life and keep that fire and passion going in the ring and really just prove that I deserve to be all elite. (laughs) Damn right. Also still the year of the crop top, everybody. So keep that in mind. Crop tops 365. Hashtag (laughs) listen. If it's the winter time, throw on a coat over that thing. Girl, crop top 365. Ah, so great. I love it. Well, Sunny, thank you so much for coming on the session. It was lovely getting to talk to you. You are a special human being and cannot wait to see more of you on, uh, on Dynamite Rampage. Whatever show you happen to be on, I'm watching.